Hi, this is Team Co Travels, and today we are in the French Riviera, La Côte d'Azur. The French Riviera, or La Côte d'Azur, is the southeastern French coast on the Mediterranean, spanning from the town of Cassis to the Italian border. One of the most highly sought-after destinations in the world, the area is renowned as a glamorous playground of the rich and famous due to locations such as Monaco, saint tropez and Cannes. On adore! Cannes is best known worldwide for its famous film festival, which takes place in May each year and features movies from all over the world competing for the Palme d'Or and Grand Prix. Centering around the Palais des Festivals et des Congrès, you can pose on the red carpet and see the town's walk of fame, where the international stars on the silver screen have pressed their hands into the concrete. One day, I will walk that red carpet for real. That's my boat just there. This is Jeremy's. Slightly inland are some more rustic towns like saint paul de vence a beautiful medieval town perched on a hill above rolling countryside. This might be a little less glitzy, but it's stunning nonetheless. A few mere miles away is another high-end destination. Nice is France's second most visited destination, behind Paris, and it's easy to see why. A beautiful city of Mediterranean architecture, there's no doubt that the city is indeed very nice. Nice is nice. Do you see what I did there? Well done, you're very clever. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. But what everyone is in Nice to see is the seafront. La Promenade des Anglais stretches for seven kilometers and is lined with hotels, bars, and restaurants. Climb the steps to the Cadran Solaire on the eastern end for a fantastic view along it, and it looks fantastic even when it's cloudy. Just see how good it will look in the summer. Well, it's our own fault for going in October. Well, further down is Nice's most famous building, the Negresco, a palatial hotel built in 1912. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice. Although this was probably our favourite, the Russian Orthodox Cathedral. Villa et Fusil de Rothschild. On adore! The holiday home of Baroness Beatrice de Rothschild, this spectacular villa was built in the early 20th century and housed a vast collection of art and sculpture. Its gardens are considered to be some of the most notable in France. With nine different gardens on different themes, they centre around its large central ponds, which feature fountain displays that occur every 15 minutes. The villa is absolutely stunning uh, and the gardens are absolutely magnificent. I can only imagine how beautiful they must be in summer. Uh, but even in the cloud and the rain, uh, it's not lost its outstanding beauty. A member of the 
famous Rothschild family and wife of wealthy Baron Maurice de Frussy, Beatrice hired at least 10 different architects, whom she periodically fired until they built her the villa that perfectly reflected her taste. The interiors are a collection of outstanding furniture that fits perfectly within the Italianate palazzo. But beautiful though the rooms are, nothing can compare to the views you get from them. No, no, I'm fabulous. One must see for absolutely anyone is the view from La Tête de Chien, a cliff that overlooks the entirety of the microstate of Monaco. The view over Monaco from La Tête de Chien is the best view in the French Riviera, and it's absolutely worth coming up here uh, to see it during sunrise. Sunset is in the opposite direction, but sunrise, you get the beautiful colours all over the beautiful vista down below, as you can see. Make the effort, get up early. From over here, you can see an entire country in one view. The second smallest country in the world, Monaco, has an entire area of 2.02 square kilometres and is a small patch of land at the bottom of steep cliffs only 15 kilometres from the Italian border. Over the years, Monaco has grown mostly upwards because its land restrictions mean they cannot expand outwards. Now, the most densely populated sovereign state in the world, it is also home to the most expensive real estate in the world. However, it is also the wealthiest country on the planet, where 30% of its population are millionaires. Home to the Monaco Grand Prix, it is one of the most famous locations for motorsports and its enthusiasts, with its tracks making through the narrow winding streets of the city. Monaco. On Ador! A principality ruled by the House of Grimaldi since 1297, Monaco is a constitutional monarchy ruled by Prince Albert II. While independent, the state is closely aligned with its French neighbours, who have a stake in its government and was army defence in. Of course, its most famous resident was the Hollywood icon Grace Kelly, who became Princess Grace when she married Prince Rainier III in 1956. We got an invitation from Prince Albert earlier saying that we could go for lunch. Uh, he said just to walk past the guards and uh, just to wander in. Should we go? Let's do it. After you. After you. After you. After you. After you. No, I insist. You go first. Okay. Meeting a tragic end in a car accident on the cliffs above the city in 1982, Princess Grace's tomb can be found alongside her husband's in the nearby St Nicholas's Cathedral. From the moment you set foot in Monaco, you're aware of how much wealth there is around you. Yachts, sports cars and designer brands are everywhere, and on every corner, wealth management businesses. So Monaco is a bit of a tax haven. Uh, the people here don't pay any income tax whatsoever. Um, so let's come and live here. I'd love it. Except, unfortunately, Jeremy, you can't. But I can. Well, you, yeah, but you still have to pay taxes because you're French. Whereas me, no taxes. We will no longer be part of EU, so who knows? <laughs> this is true. No, but it's for anybody except the French. We can live here without any taxes. However, the price of the houses, you looked earlier at a standard studio. 27 euros a month with, for a studio apartment. Which makes up for 240,000 euros a year on rent for a studio apartment. So we might not be paying taxes. Um, a bit much that. Yeah, a bit much, a bit much.
and its most famous building, the Casino de Monte Carlo, probably the most renowned gambling establishment in the world. In fact, the reason for Monaco's wealth stems entirely from its success as a gambling destination. We gambled 20 euros and we won, well, 2 euros. Yeah, that's a pretty good business model. I can already hear the sound of our future Ferrari. And our mansion. Well, only if they manage our wealth properly. If they don't, we'll take it elsewhere. Can you spend gambling chips back in Manchester? No. No, you can't, actually. And while you're here, head to the Oceanographic Museum of Monaco, one of the biggest and best sea life centres in the world. Perched on the cliffside, the remarkable building is filled with aquariums of fish, sharks, turtles and octopi. It's definitely worth a visit. But of course, the best thing about Monaco is the view over it, which is as beautiful at night as it is in the day. And if you're lucky, you might even catch a thunderstorm while you're up there, like we did. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and to follow us on Instagram at Through My Crooky Eyes. And tune in next time when we'll be in Belgium and the north of France. In Fouet. Eh? Exactly. Until next time, folks. See ya. Au revoir.